Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hubble here today, and as you can see, we are back again playing more Madden NFL 19. And as you guessed, of course, it is Wild Card Weekend here in the National Football League, and I am beyond excited to bring you guys my playoff predictions. Of course, this is inaccurate, as you can see, because Carson Wentz is coming out out of the field. This is why uh, I'm not a big fan of Madden. It's completely unrealistic. <laughs> the whole world and their mother knows that Nick Foles is starting this game for the Eagles, but yet here's Carson Wentz in Madden because, you know, that's just how it is, I guess. But let's talk about the opening games tomorrow on Saturday, January 5th, 4.35 p.m. Eastern Time. We try to strip the ball from Zach Ertz. That's not going to happen. It's the six seed Indianapolis Colts at ten and six, taking on the three seed Houston Texans at eleven and five. Uh, the Texans win the AFC South with their victory in Week 17 and, over the Jaguars, and the Colts clinched their playoff spot by beating the Titans in Week 17. Of course, that game was a bit of a stinker, but uh, both teams. Went 9-2 and two since week 6. That's tied for the best in the NFL. That's just insanity. These, these teams started off so poorly and then ended up ripping off, a, you know, a great second half of the season to, to come out and, you know, make the playoffs. And it's not, it's not easy to make the playoffs in the National Football League. And that's why, you know, every team that made it, I give them their own credit. Unless you're from the NFC East, then I give you no credit. Uh, that division is so piss poor, I could win it with my arms folded and 10 men on offense and 9 men on defense. That division is just pathetic. <laughs> Anybody could win it. But um, on the other hand, let's talk about this AFC South matchup. These teams have met twice already. In the, they, they split. Colts won once and the Texans won once. And... Um, the Texans won the more recent matchup, I do believe, and uh, I think that's in their favor that they, they've um, they were able to win. No, actually, I'm wrong. Uh, they beat the Colts to start their win streak, their nine-game win streak, and then the Colts beat them to end their win streak. So I think that there's a little bit of revenge on the line there when it comes to the Colts and the Texans. The, Texans obviously want to get revenge on the Colts for ending their win streak, and obviously they've got bigger dreams of the Super Bowl. I don't think the Colts are ready yet. Um, they're getting there though. They they are. They've got a really good defense. Uh, Andrew Luck started to find his footing there, you know, in that second half of the season, and he's been playing with pretty much Eric Ebron and. Is it Eric Ebron? I think it's Eric Ebron. Eric Ebron and T.Y. Hilton's right foot. And that's not much to be <laughs> to be happy about. They need more skilled players. Uh, they, they need a better running back and they need some wide receivers. And then I'll call that team deep playoff ready. They, they barely snuck in this season. And obviously, like I said earlier, it's hard to get in. So I give them props. But... And they snuck in by the hair in their chinny chin chin, and obviously Madden down there at the ticker thinks Indy's going to beat Houston, but I don't. I think the Houston Texans are going to come out and have a hell of a day. Uh, it's it's going to be a tough game, and I, I'm a Houston Texan fan temporarily. As you guys know, I went to the Texans and the Jets game uh, earlier this season. That game was a freaking nail-biter, and they were facing the damn Jets, so if they're the... Uh, <laughs> if the Colts have anything to say about it, this game is going to go down to the wire. It's going to be a great one, but I'm taking the Texans. I just like my guy Deshaun Watson. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, 150-some catches, no drops. It's like the best ever. The dude just literally does not drop passes. It, and I know I probably just jinxed him, but he's the best receiver in football. I, I, don't, I don't know if there's a debate at this point, if anybody could even possibly make a case for Michael Thomas or or Odell Beckham and I'm a Giants fan and I, I have to admit DeAndre Hopkins is the best wide receiver in football and he's been playing hurt <laughs> it's just ridiculous like the guy's amazing 
and, and if the Texans' running game can get going, then I think they they have a real shot to win this game. But uh, it's going to take a Herculean effort from who, who do they got running the ball back there? Lamar Miller and Alfred Blue. Uh, I, I think Dante Foreman is back now. But either way, it's it's going to be a tough game, and the Texans are going to need to be good on both sides of the football and on both phases of offense. You know, running the ball and, and throwing the ball, and obviously with Deshaun Watson, I don't have any. I don't have any issues with him throwing the football. He's come back 100, 150% from that ACL tear, and he looks better than ever. Even better than when he did at, uh, what he did in college at Clemson. And he's got that big game experience, you know. He's a national champion. He beat the Alabama Crimson Tide in one of the best games I've ever watched in my life, football-wise. And I think that uh, he's ready mentally he's got to be he's been in this pressure cooker situation before and I mean the rest of his team is young and you know I think that most of his team has only made the one playoff game and that game was a disaster because I don't know who was quarterbacking that team Brock Osweiler maybe but eh, that was a disaster they got carried by their defense this year and that's another thing with this Houston Texas team their defense is gonna have to show up because that defense has not been <laughs> on the map for weeks now. I mean, they got torched by Nick Foles and the Wentz. Nick Foles and the Eagles, rather. They got absolutely torched by the Eagles. And that game wasn't close. I mean, it was a close game, but it wasn't even close. And I know Deshaun Watson's never lost a game by, what, what was it, more than one touchdown? But still, I mean, that game wasn't close. The Eagles really ran away with it. And the Texans still had a shot to win that game. And I think that's more a testament to the offense than it is to the defense because the defense gave up all the freaking points. Uh, Deshaun Watson is going to have to stay clean. Obviously, he can't be eating eight sacks in a game. He can't be uh, turning the football over, which I don't think he he's going to have a problem with that. But On the other side, the the Colts just have to do what they do well, you know, set up set up the, th the throw with the, with the run. And most teams like to try to do that, but the Colts are really predicated on it because I think uh, I think everybody's confident in Andrew Luck's arm now. But you know, you never know. One bad hit, one tweak, one something, and maybe something gets dislodged or moved, and maybe he's not feeling too hot. So you're gonna have to run the football. But I don't have any uh, any doubts about Andrew Luck's ability to play in this game. I certainly don't have any doubt in the Indianapolis Colts that they could win, but I don't think they will. I, uh, like, like I said before, I'm going 100% the Houston Texans. I just think they're the better football team this juncture. I think they have the more experienced team, the better team, uh, with, with better players. and Ultimately, that's what you need to win football games, right? So I'm going to take the Texans. They're going to move on to the divisional round of the playoffs. Hopefully, they get to meet the New England Patriots. That'll be a fun game. The two and the three seed. That would be awesome. But next, uh, tomorrow at 8-15, the Seattle Seahawks and the Dallas Cowboys. The five seed Seahawks, four seed Cowboys. Both teams are 10 and 6. Um, the, the Seattle Seahawks have the number one ranked rushing offense and the Cowboys have the number five ranked rushing defense and uh, they say defense wins championships but not in this NFL offense really is you know the, the key to winning football games and the, the Seahawks not only are they great at running the football but they can rip out explosive pass plays with Russell Wilson's ability to escape the pocket and and make stuff happen and you know be a general con artist to defenses like you think he's doing one thing and then whoop nope there he goes this is Russell Wilson doing something else speaking of there's Mitchell Trubisky right now just running out of the pocket scrambling for a first down that's a good I a good visualization of the kind of decision making Russell Wilson goes through and you know I wrote the Seahawks off early in the season I said they're not gonna make the playoffs I said they'd finish sub 500, but here I am eating crow. I think they're one of the better football teams in this playoff, especially on the NFC side. And I know they're only the five seed, but I think they had a, a rocky start that really didn't help them much. And and now they're into the they're into the tournament, and they've got, in my opinion, an easy matchup against the Cowboys. All you got to do is stop Ezekiel Elliott, and Dak Prescott can't do anything. 
And I know you're going to say, oh, well, look at what Dak did to the Giants in Week 17. Four touchdown passes to a tight end who nobody knows. But you're playing the New York Giants defense. The New York Giants defense is so bad, it's it's just unbelievable. I mean, we've seen some of the worst blown games in the history of football come at the hands of the New York Giants defense. The Giants lost like five games by five points or fewer. You know who I blame for that? The defense. And Eli Manning, but that's a different story. And uh, anybody could do that, really, ex except for Chase Daniel and the frickin' Chicago Bears, who the Giants have a win over. A ain't the NFL funny? Pat O'Donnell, he just laid the hit stick right there. But uh, I'm taking the Seahawks in this game, on the road, in Dallas. I just think it's a better matchup, you know. Uh, sure, the Cowboys have a, a blink and you'll miss some defense that everybody thinks is so good, but it really isn't. When you watch the tape, the Dallas Cowboy defense isn't that good. I don't know who they've beaten this year that's any sort of indication that they're a good football team. What, the Saints? Uh, so you rattled Drew Brees for one game and maybe a game and a half, and then he comes back and he's still the runner-up for MVP because nobody's beating Patrick Mahomes in that race. But I don't know. The Cowboys, in my opinion, they play in the easiest division in football, at least at the moment, because that division was 100% the Washington Redskins to win. And then Alex Smith, unfortunately, broke his leg. And, you know, the guy who I thought, excuse me, would uh, be able to fill in and, and help them out their backup. His name escapes me. But uh, I thought that he was going to be able to pick up the reins and lead the, lead the charge. But... He got hurt as well, and you got to bring in Mark Sanchez, and he gets benched for looking like garbage against the Giants, and then Josh Johnson comes in and wins a game, and everybody's like, oh, it's going to happen with our fourth-string quarterback that we just signed two weeks ago, but not to be. But it, it really should have gone to the Redskins. They were far and beyond the most talented team at the moment in the entire NFC East, but injuries have just really decimated them, especially if they had been able to keep Darius Geis, and didn't lose him, and didn't lose Alex Smith, but... It's unfortunate the way that had to end. And I'm a Giants fan. You know, that, that rivalry's still there. <laughs> Lo and behold, even though uh, the last time the two teams met, the game wasn't even close. The Giants literally ran all over them with Saquon Barkley. You know, I just like to talk about the Giants because I love them. And I love Saquon Barkley, but they are a pain in my goddamn ass. But I'm taking the Seahawks in this game. I think the Cowboys are heavily overrated. Uh, I think they're probably the most overrated division leader in the history of NFL. The NFL. This season, I think they're extremely overrated. That offense is a joke. That offense isn't going to be able to do anything when you put them against a real defense, especially if they have to go and play Chicago next week. Or the Rams, and the Rams defense has gotten a lot better. I mean, just get out of here. It's, it's not going to happen. So the Seahawks are going to run the ball all over the Cowboys and Jason Garrett's a terrible head coach so he's going to abandon the run when they get down by three points and then it's all hell's going to break loose and I can't wait for Cowboys fans to shit themselves when Dak Prescott ends up looking like a junior varsity quarterback and I probably could have quarterback better than Dak Prescott on that team. It's easy to run the play action and then just toss little two-yard passes to your tight end and he takes it for 15 yards. I mean, come on. Get out of here. Seahawks are winning this game. Probably not going to be close. <laughs> I hope not anyway, but I'm taking the Seahawks. I really do honestly though think that they win. That matchup is really good and I just like the, the grit and the guile. I don't even know if that's the right word, but I, I like Russell Wilson on the road. I think that he is a grizzled veteran. I think he learned that from Peyton Manning, how to be great in the clutch moments, aside from that one Super Bowl against the Patriots. We don't talk about that. America doesn't talk about when the Patriots win Super Bowls. That's why I'm a Giants fan. Uh, next up, Sunday, January 6, 4.40 p.m. Eastern Time. This matchup you're watching right now, the sixth seed, Philadelphia Eagles at 9-7 and seven versus the three-seed three Chicago Bears at 12-4. And, and the Eagles, you want to talk about phony teams sneaking into the playoffs. This team is a joke uh, in all seriousness, really. Their defense, everyone thought, was so great last year because, oh, my God, they won the Super Bowl. But guess what? 
they've been getting beat left, right, and center by teams that shouldn't have beat them. They got beat by the Tennessee Titans in overtime. I mean, it, oh, there's Danny Trevathan with the wonkiest looking interception I've ever seen. But uh, they got beat by the Titans in overtime in a game they frankly should have won. And they only beat the Giants by field goals, I swear to God. It's a pain in the ass how the Giants can't ever seem to beat anybody. But the Eagles are... They're a phony team. Come on. If any if any Eagles fan can really sit across from me and give me a compelling case why they're going to go back to the Super Bowl and defend their championship or even win this game against the Bears, if they can give me a real reason other than Nick Foles is 12-4 and four in December through February since 2013, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to laugh right in your face because I don't care. Like your backup quarterback, I don't care what his record is in December through February. I care about what he's going to do this weekend. I don't care what he did yesterday. I don't care what he had for breakfast this morning. I care what he's going to do on Sunday. And what he's going to do on Sunday is face the Chicago Bears defense, namely Khalil Mack, that's going to torture him, especially because he's got that upper body injury. I don't know what it is, if it's a lung, if it's a rib, if it's this or that, but you can't breathe when you're getting smacked around like that. And Khalil Mack is a freak show. He is a man amongst boys. And the Eagles are going to learn that when <laughs> Khalil Mack runs wild all over the Philadelphia Eagles. And Nick Foles, he's a backup quarterback at heart. Because trust me, if he was as good as people think he is, he'd have the starting job in Philadelphia or literally anywhere else. And, you know, Eddie Jackson and Danny Trevathan, like you just saw, and, that, and Leonard Floyd. And th I mean, that team is so young, so talented. There's no reason they shouldn't win this football game. And I haven't even talked about the truth, Mitchell Trubisky, and his offense. Matt Nagy has really revolutionized his football team. The Bears were a freaking joke last year. I called Mitchell Trubisky a waste of a first-round draft pick. And now look at me. Look how stupid I look. Because Mitchell Trubisky looks like he, he's unbelievable. He's in my level, or in my book, he's on par with some of the better young quarterbacks of today. Your Carson Wentz's. Or not your Carson Wentz's. I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say Jared Goff. Your Jared Goff's. Maybe not your Patrick Mahomes. He's an anomaly. He's a freak. But... Um, the, the Bears' offense is just, it's great. And so is their defense. Their defense is really, really good. And the Eagles, I just don't think they have a match on offense. Like, who's going to run the football for them? Josh, is that Josh Adams? <laughs> Who are they going to throw it to? Alshon Jeffrey? Get out of here. Just because Alshon Jeffrey's all, ooh, I'm back in Chicago, and I don't like Chicago, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I don't care about Alshon Jeffrey. Brandon Marshall's probably played in Chicago since he left, and Brandon Marshall's crap, too. So, Eagles are going to get smoked. That's just how I feel. I hate the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm going with the Bears. Oh, and you know what? I overlooked the Sunday 1-05 uh, game. I, I knew I was missing something, so uh, I'm just going to throw this in. I'm not even going to edit it in the correct order. You guys, you, you guys get my meaning, but uh, it's the five seed. Uh, I almost said San Diego, Los Angeles Chargers at 12 and four, and the four seed, Baltimore Ravens at 10 and six. And how crap is that? That the Chargers are 12 and four. They're the second best team in their division by what a game, and yet they're relegated to the five seed in a road playoff game. I just. <laughs> The NFL playoffs are so funky. But, I mean, it's interesting when a team could be so good and still they have to go on the road. And as you see there on the ticker on the bottom, or as you just saw, Madden thinks the Ravens are going to win. But uh, the Ravens offense, man, whoo. They're, they're tricky to stop with that, that hot shot, Lamar Jackson. I honestly don't know any other player on their offense, I don't think. Other than Lamar Jackson, but I don't think that really <laughs> matters because he's so dynamic. He uh, he really is the second coming of Robert Griffin III, and I hope I haven't just doomed his entire career. But the way that he runs the football is so intelligent. He's not just running to run. He finds creases, finds holes, gets down when he needs to. I, I like his toughness. He can take a hit. 
you know, he's just a really tough kid. He's, he's got a lot of grit. And uh, their defense is really good. And there's a reason why they were saying after they beat the Chargers this most recent time here in the, in the regular season that they're the team nobody wants to see in the playoffs. And I can see why. They're very good. But on the other hand, the L.A. Chargers have had a few weeks to rebound from that game where they lost against the Ravens. And they've won a couple games. And, you know, I think that they're a lot better now than they were even when they played the Ravens, and that wasn't even too long ago. And uh, the Chargers are 7-1 and one on the road, and obviously um, when they lost to the Ravens, they were in StubHub Center, but really every game... Is it StubHub Center? I don't know. But really every game for the Chargers is a road game because they don't have any fans, apparently. So I don't think that it's a detriment to them that they have to go on the road and play Baltimore. I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. And uh, we all saw what the Browns did to the Ravens defense last week. I mean, Baker Mayfield sure he threw four interceptions or whatever it was, but he had a chance to win that game. He was going to go right down the field and score if he didn't have a excuse me if he didn't have a tip drill interception. Go uh, go the other way. You know how many times out of ten does that lineman stick his be stick his mitten up and pluck that one away like that? It's just a phenomenal play there by the Ravens defender. I don't even know who it was, but it was a great play. And, and you know, I don't, I don't blame that on, on uh, <coughs> Baker Mayfield. But either way, the the Browns had a chance to beat them last week, and I think that they kind of set the the blueprint here for the Chargers. And I, I do think the Chargers are going to end up pulling this one out, even though literally on tape <laughs> you can watch this season. The Chargers lost to the Ravens, but I don't know. My gut tells me the Chargers are going to come out and win this game, so I'm going to go with the Chargers. And uh, they're going a roundabout way. That is the wild card round. And then 2018 NFL playoffs, guys. Sorry I mixed up the Sunday games. I'm looking at the, the matchups on the NFL app just so I have a little bit of something to go off of instead of just my memory because I'm an idiot. And for some reason... I guess I scrolled too far, and I just completely missed the Chargers-Ravens game, but I, I ended up getting it in there for you, so there you go. And I hope that you guys enjoy the football this weekend. Uh, just to wrap it up after I get the sack, just kidding. I'm going to let you guys know my picks just one more time, just so you got it and got it good. I'm picking the Texans over the Colts, the Seahawks over the Cowboys, the Chargers over the Ravens, and the Bears over the Eagles. So that is my official predictions for this Saturday and Sunday's NFL action. And am I upset that the season's winding down? Of course, I, I am. I love football, and the fact that it's going to be over here in, what, five short weeks really upsets me. So I'm going to enjoy every minute of it that I can, and uh, I love the wild card round. I know people just say it's like week 18, but it's not. It's, it's a playoff game, and uh, I'm excited. I really am, so I can't wait. I hope that you guys enjoy the football this weekend. I know I will. I'll be glued to my TV, and um, I'm going to throw a little party tomorrow, and a bunch of people are going to come over, and we're going to watch some good football, and then they're going to stay the night, and then we're going to watch more football the next day. So yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy. Uh, have a safe one. I know I will. Just staying inside watching football. And uh, that's going to do it for me, your boy Hobo. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, drop a comment, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.